So I'll just go back quickly um, and just explain. Hopefully you've been able to see the slides at least, um, but I'll just run over um, the, these changes. So stage one, um, nothing much is changed we've just added in an extra requirement for learners to um, describe the rules of a game. Um, stage two um, learners will be asked to describe their favourite activity so it could be um, you know their favourite activity is to um, play a game that's fine they can they can use that or it could be um, roller skating or whatever they want to talk about that's absolutely fine. And then stage three, um, learners are required to bring in the book still and they'll be asked to explain their favourite section of the book and describe their favourite character. Um, and just note there at the bottom, they don't have to have read the book um, they bring in with them. And then we move on to group. Um, so the assessment criteria has been separated for the um, the choice. Uh, the speaking clear, clearly so audibility and clarity of diction you'll notice across all of the syllabi have changed we've separated them out um, to make it more um, to make it more fair for, for examiners to comment against and assess against um, and then we have added in um, assessment criteria 3.2 which is to listen to each other and interact appropriately during the game so what we've done is added in um, an extra assessment criteria so that one is assessing their interaction for the poem and the other is assessing their interaction for the game. So again, they've got um, it's a bit fairer. Then um, group introductory stage three, we have um, changed the game. Um, so the examiner will now provide the group with the first line of a story. So it could be once upon a time or in a land far, far away. And then the learners will each have an opportunity to add to that. Um, and the idea is that they will create you know, a, new, a new story around that. And then, sorry, just going back, um, the assessment criteria are the, are the same um, as stages one and two. So for introductory, there isn't too much that's changing. Um, there's just a few little additions into the conversation element and then the change of game for stage three group. Um, and then we move on to communication. So um, for those who, who couldn't hear what I was saying, I'm so sorry about that. Um, but this is the new anthology, um, which is volume 19. This will come into effect from the 1st of August. So all the set pieces are in here. Um, so if you do have volume 18, now you're currently teaching and you've, you've taught for a while, you've got volume 18, you can use those as own choice pieces from the 1st of August um, if you want to. Obviously, the, the, the same guidelines are still there. You can use um, other poems and other pieces as long as they're not set in volume 19. That's absolutely fine. Um, so just a quick recap on entry level then. Um, the way that the syllabus is now formatted, uh, the assessment criteria tables are formatted in the syllabus, means that we've had to reword um, the assessment criteria wording for assessment criteria 3.2. Um, so learners will still need to give accurate meanings of up to four words. So um, for distinction, they will be able to define all four words. Merit is um, three out of four and pass is two out of four. So as long as they define accurately two out of four words, they've met the assessment criteria to pass standard. And that's all that's changed there for entry level. Uh, going on then to grade one, um, there's a separation there with um, speaking accurately from memory and using keywords to communicate meaning. Again, um, giving the learner the opportunity to meet those assessment criteria more fairly. Um, and audibility and clarity of diction have changed as uh, have been separated, sorry, as well. Um, and then grades two and three, similar sorts of things, um, separation of uh, memory and communicate meaning and then clarity of diction and audibility as well. So grade four, no changes. Um, there's just the change of set pieces, um, which you'll find a list in the syllabus. And then for grade five, we have separated um, phrasing and pausing again to give learners um, a fair opportunity and uh, to meet the assessment criteria and examiners um, more ability to give you know, accurate feedback. 
So then our level three um, qualifications, grade six, um, we have reworded um, modulation, uh, the assessment criteria for modulation and clarity of diction, um, as you'll see there. And we've added in um, for 3.1, the use of body language and facial expression. Um, we've added in the, the the fact that the learners have to use their body and their facial expression to demonstrate an understanding of the text and engage the audience because that's what we're kind of looking for at this level um, and to communicate the sight reading with expression and fluency um, just to, you know just to kind of make those a little bit more clearer for teachers um, as to what Lambda are looking for and what the examiners will be looking for um, and also 5.2 in the knowledge section um, just a slight rewording, so the, the use of the word outline is there. So learners are required to, to give an outline of the content of their verse selection rather than give a brief, accurate, um, an accurate and detailed summary of the content of the verse selection. Hopefully that makes it a little bit more clear as to what the examiner will be looking for in for that. Um, grade seven, similar sorts of things again. Um, we've just got the rewording there of 2.2 and 2.3 and 3.1, the addition of um, demonstrating understanding of the text and engaging the audience. And then that rewording of um, 4.1 for the sight reading as well. So the actual format of these exams hasn't changed at all. And then grade eight, similar sort of thing again. Um, We've got um, a rewording of 7.2 in the knowledge section. So um, learners are required to give a summary of the life and work and the context of writing of one of the authors selected for piece one or piece two. Um, we quite often have telephone calls and queries from teachers not quite um, clear on that. So, so hopefully that has made it um, clearer as to what, what the examiner will be asking or what the requirement is there for that particular knowledge section. Um, and then it's kind of reflected um, in the in the wording below. So um, the examiner will now choose the piece to discuss, not the learner. So the learner will need to kind of have an understanding of both pieces um, and the examiner will choose one to discuss with the learner on the day. So moving on to reading for performance then. Uh, entry level. Um, so just a reminder that the learners must present their links from memory, but actually their their pieces, their reading uh, choices that should be read. Um, it shouldn't be memorised at all. This is a, you know, as it says, a reading for performance exam. Um, and you'll see some um, sort of similar changes to verse and process. So that knowledge question um, the giving accurate meanings of words has been changed, uh, reworded slightly um, and then the separation there of audibility and clarity of diction is a reoccurring theme. Grade one then, um, delivering links from memory uh, in the form of introduction, linking statement and conclusion. We've just removed the word prepare um, from that particular assessment criteria and then again um, separation of audibility, clarity of diction. Uh, for grade two, then we have uh, changed the wording um, for 3.3. So um, instead of effective use, it's now appropriate use, um, which sort of makes it, I hope, hopefully makes it clearer for teachers that it, it's more about the learner using the, the space appropriately to the pieces that they have chosen. Um, and then obviously the examiner will assess that more accurately um, because effectiveness um, is, is quite tricky sometimes, uh, whereas being appropriate with the piece is a little bit easier to examine more fairly. And then knowledge requirements then, um, the learner will be asked to provide an outline of the book um, from where the prose reading has been selected rather than a description or an explanation of the book. So it's more about them providing a, a, a kind of summary, if you like, an outline, a succinct explanation um, of the book rather than, you know, this is what happens in chapter one, this is what happens in chapter two, which is great information. Um, it's just sort of guiding learners to give a more succinct overview um, rather than a very detailed, you know, line by line sort of explanation. Obviously, there's a time limit 
um, to these exams, unfortunately. Um, and then again, you'll see um, some uh, separation and wording change for um, the assessment criteria 2.1 to 2.4. Um, that's sort of, again, something that will come um, throughout the communication examinations. Uh, grade three, similar sorts of things. Again, um, they'll be asked. So um, in the knowledge section, um, learners will be asked to give an explanation of the contrast between the verse and prose readings um, rather than explain the mood of the pieces. Um, we found that there was some confusion over the word mood at this grade, um, so hopefully that makes it um, much simpler and much more accessible for learners to understand. Um, again, separation of wording, uh, speak with audibility and uh, speak with clarity of diction and the change, uh, we've got some assessment criteria wording change um, in that bottom box below there. What I will say is in these, um, in the actual syllabus now, um, so for example, if you were to go to the beginning of this uh, reading for performance exams, for example, um, if we look on page 70, if you have access to the syllabus, there is um, all the changes, there's a list of changes there. So on the left, on the right hand side, sorry, you will see what is required at, um, currently for the 2014 syllabus. And then on the left hand side, you'll see what it has been changed to. So hopefully if you're ever concerned or, um, or, or worried about making mistakes or not sure on what's now being required, um, have a little check there. Obviously, if you're still um, not too sure, then give us a ring. That's absolutely fine. But hopefully this will sort of put any fears um, to rest and, and you know you can be confident that these are um, what what is now required. Um, so that's grade three reading for performance. Uh, grade four, um, again, it's just some wording changes here um, to make it more clear for for teachers, for learners, um, and to make it the assessment more fair across the board. Um, we have separated. Um, the the current 3.1 um so make, so now it's into two so the first criteria is use of body and facial expression and then the second one is appropriate use of performance space to complement the recital um, you'll find as well that we've added in um engagement of the audience obviously the reading for performance is about presenting to um, an audience so um using their you know their body language and that sort of thing and, and the use of space that will hopefully um, complement and en engage the audience further. Grade five, um, again, very similar sort of changes to wording, that um, 3.1 assessment criteria has been separated. Um, and you'll see again, um, speak with clear and precise diction is a new, is new wording rather than speak, uh, speak with clarity of diction. Then we go on to our level three qualifications, so grade six and seven here for reading for performance. Um, delivering links from memory, again, we've we've removed the um, develop and um, apply here um, because it's not something that we we can um, we can you know confirm and, and assess that way. Um, and then we've got speak with clear and precise diction. And and again, use the performance space appropriately rather than make effective use of. And for grade eight, um, we've separated 1.3, delivering links from memory um, with spontaneity is new wording. So that use of spontaneity is, is, is new for grade eight reading for performance. Um, obviously, this level um, is, you know, it sits on the, the, the um, RQF framework at level three, that's the same as um, A levels. So we're looking for a bit more maturity here, um, you know, all the way through grade six, seven and eight, but here it is an assessed, spontaneity is, is assessed here. Um, and then delivering links with mature understanding, um, is, you know, making it a bit more clear as to what the examiner is going to be expecting the learner to do. Um, the uh, precise diction um, has been reworded and um, again, the use of performance space appropriately um, rather than effectively. Um, so knowledge then, um, 5.1 here, describe and justify the reasons behind 
the choice of um, reading, theme and staging um, rather than giving an explanation behind just to give a kind of a rationale, a justification of why they've decided to choose those um, readings based on their theme and then how their staging um, sort of complements that. So that is reading for performance. Um, we go on to speaking in public. So um, again, some changes to the assessment criteria here. Um, the 1.1 then has just kind of been reworded slightly, um, again, because of the way that we've formatted it in the syllabus. Um, it just makes it make more sense, essentially. And then audibility and clarity of diction have been separated. That one. So um, from level one, um, obviously for, for grade two, that's where the learners are required to bring in a visual aid and use it in their, um, in their presentation. That's not to say that they can't use it at entry level or um, grade one. It just means it's not an assessed component, but they can bring it in. That's absolutely fine. What we're saying for entry level and um, level one examinations is that the use of PowerPoint presentations or similar um, are prohibited here. So we're trying to encourage learners to use, you know, bring in an object or, you know, sometimes learners come in in a football kit and talk about football. That's absolutely fine. Um, just to kind of encourage a, a wider variety of, of um visual aid really and then from level two so grades four and five they can um, they can start to use um, electronic equipment and that sort of thing um, so now um, they're still the learners are still required to give um, a prepared speech about an experience event or visit um, and they'll be assessed on how well they use relevant vocabulary and um, giving a clear structure um, those 1.2 is, is pretty much the same. It's just we've taken away basic, secure and in-depth. Um, facial expression is still there as well um, to support the speech and make sure it's appropriate there. Um, main, maintaining concentration in the conversation and 3.3, engage and respond appropriately to questions in the conversation. So um, the, the learners are still required to ask at least one question but they will be um you know there's not a kind of a limit to how many questions they can ask it's more about them engaging appropriately um with those questions and uh, with the conversation in general and then um again audibility clarity of diction for the in their delivery of the speech and um, those assessment criteria have been separated so grade three then um again that just that reminds there in the purple box just about the use of PowerPoint and not being allowed here at grade three. And um, there's quite a lot, it looks like there's quite a lot of changes there, but essentially it's um, it's just rewording and making it clear. What I would say is just become familiar with this new assessment criteria. Um, we haven't changed it drastically. It's, it's more about make, making it clear for the learner and for teachers um, and making it more fair as well um, and more um, user friendly. So for the knowledge um, for grade three, we have removed um, the, the requirement for learners to ask um, questions to further the conversation, uh, well, asking at least one, two or three. So now the learner will be required to be engaged in the conversation, responding appropriately um, and, engage, and, and the assessment criteria has changed to engage appropriately in the conversation by responding to and asking questions. So, you know, as long as they are, it's that idea of uh, them having a conversation that makes sense um, and encouraging those skills um, rather than, you know, sort of knowing that they have to ask at least one question um, and it could be something completely random, just encouraging learners to feel, feel empowered and feel a bit more confident about having a conversation with a stranger um, you know, or an examiner. So then move on then to level two, um, grades four and five. So the set topics um, have changed and they can be found in the syllabus. Um, if I just quickly flip there, um, this you can find um, from page 146 in the communication syllabus. Um, and you'll find those listed there um, for grade four and grade five. 
they've just been updated um, and hopefully they'll be subjects that will still interest learners as well. Um, the assessment criteria changes are very similar to what we've seen previously. Um, and then you'll notice at the bottom the knowledge requirement um, about the conversation again. It's engage confidently in conversation by responding to and asking questions appropriately. And that's grade four and five. And like I say, you can start to use um, PowerPoint presentations or use of technology, that sort of thing at this level. So speaking in public, grade six and grade eight, um, actually for level three <coughs> in general, so grade six, seven and eight, this is a big change. Um, the impromptu speech is still a requirement, but it will now be prepared inside the examination room. Um, that will make sure or ensure that all learners have a fair and equal um, opportunity to create that speech within the given timeframes. Um, the examiner will remain in the room with them um, whilst that happens, sort of acting as an invigilator if you like, um, and the learner can, can prepare in whatever way they want to within those 15 minutes. So if they want to get up and practice, that's absolutely fine, not a problem at all. If they want to um, you know, make notes and, and reread them and rewrite, that's absolutely fine as well. Um, the examiner obviously won't be able to, to help the learner. That's you know, the point of it is that it's all self um, self driven. So um, like I say, examiner will be in the room. They they will sort of give a prompt to so say you've had you know, seven minutes or you've got five minutes left or whatever. Um, and just a reminder that they, the learners can present their pieces in any order. So if they want to start with their impromptu speech first, absolutely fine. Um, or if they want to leave it in the middle or to the end, again, absolutely fine. Up to the learner to do whatever, you know, to present in whatever order they want to. Um, it's a good idea for them to bring in, you know, obviously, a pen, um, paper, note cards if they want to. That's absolutely fine. Um, but that will be all there able to bring in with them. We have to make sure that every single learner taking these exams is given the same opportunity um, and to sit in, you know, to have a room of their own where they can sit down and concentrate without distractions um, or to be encouraged by anybody else. Um, that's that's what we're sort of striving for. They will not be able to log on to the internet. To yes, use. absolutely. Um, the, the point of the impromptu speech is that they're given um, a topic and, you know, the, these topics aren't specific. They're very, very broad. Um, so however they want to interpret that is absolutely fine. But yeah, Linda's absolutely right. There's there's no um, use of Internet. Um, in, in There isn't currently either. Learners shouldn't be using the Internet currently, but we're just being a little bit more strict about about it and we're able to regulate it a little bit more by bringing the learner into the room and like I say that makes it fair for everybody then. Um, so looking at assessment criteria then, um, again just sort of similar changes as we've seen previously, um, the use of knowledge uh, of the chosen subject to create a clear structure, um, removing that brief, secure, clear and defined. Um, the use of, you know, projecting their voice and separating that from um, clarity of diction, speak with clear and precise diction, which we've seen previously. Um, and then we've um, also sort of separated uh, or, or reworded, sorry, um, 2.6. So effectively use visual aids to support the delivery of at least one of the speeches um, at, the, at these two grades. So moving on to grade seven, um, like I say, it looks as if a lot has changed, but mainly it's it's separating out these assessment criteria to make it a fairer assessment for everybody, um, and to give also to give teachers guidance. Um, you know, were they audible or were they clear? Which one did they fall down on? Well, now it'll it will make um, much more sense. You know, or whether they were great at both. Um, so that is the um, communication syllabus. Like I say, all the changes are detailed um, at the front of each kind of section within the syllabus. So, you know, if you just teach speech, uh, speaking in public, you would go to page 119 and then you'll find all the, all the changes from page 120 uh, right through to 124. Um, and that's the same for each one. There's a little section for each, sort of, uh, each subject. 
So then we move on to performance, um, starting with um, acting exams. So we've got a lovely new acting anthology as well, um, set pieces from grade one to grade five in here. Um, there's a lovely contents page as well at the front, um, which hopefully will make it a bit more user friendly. Um, and there's lots of um, a vast array of different pieces in here that will hopefully appeal to learners of all different ages, different genders, um, you know, different backgrounds. Hopefully there's something in there for everybody. Um, we've tried really hard to make sure that there's at least one piece in there that somebody will like. But also recognising that your own choice piece is where, you know, you can, you've got so much freedom to, to have a look at different things that interest learners. So starting with entry level then, um, there is a new requirement here um, for learners to use the face and body um, in response to the text. So um, currently it isn't an assess, a, a sort of an assessment um, criteria, but we have brought it in. Um, we found that teachers wanted feedback on that and obviously examiners can't comment on that particular um, element because it's not there. So we've brought it in now. Um, the learning outcome, so LO3, has changed slightly to reflect that. Um, again, we can see the separation of audibility, clarity of diction, and then we've just added in um, use of facial expression into 3.1. Grade one, similar sort of thing again, we've added in um, the use of facial expression to be assessed here, and you'll just see that reflected in the wording. Um, just a reminder that from grade one to grade five, learners can present, um, they can enter for a solo examination, a duologue examination or a combined examination. Um, and then we go on to grade two, again separation um, of the current 2.1. Um, the use of um, facial expression has been brought in here as well. And a question change. So what currently learners are asked what the characters are doing in each scene, but now they'll be asked what is happening in each scene instead, just to make that a bit clearer. Grade three, um, the performance assessment criteria have changed similar to grade two, um, and that knowledge question has changed again as well. So instead of asking, instead of being able to answer what they're doing in each scene, they're now going to be asked uh, what is happening in each scene. Grade four then, so this is where we see um, a bit more of a bigger change. So um, currently um, at grade five, learners are asked to um, demonstrate the, uh, the working stage areas. Um, we've brought that now to grade four. So um, you'll see on this slide here, um, they, will, they will now um, give, they will now have to stand, you know, demonstrate the, the working stage areas. So we've swapped that around. Um, we have sort of reworded some more of the um, knowledge criteria as well. Um, you can see that there. So how the characters are feeling um, in each scene and what they're trying to achieve rather than how they react to their situations. Um, description of how the characters are feeling in the chosen scenes and how they react to the situations is now 4.1. Um, the knowledge question change is the reasons for the physical characterization in response to each text and each of the character's situations. So instead of, an, of the question being why do the characters move as they do, it's a little bit more specific and hopefully that will be um, a bit more of a guidance as for teachers as to what the examiner is actually going to ask the learner about. Um, so grade five then, obviously we've removed the requirement for the learner to demonstrate um, the working stage areas. So what have we changed it to? The learner will now um, have to give a description of the reasons for their choice of staging in the chosen scenes using the technical terminology of the working stage areas. So, you know, if learners are going up the grades from grade four, five onwards, they're kind of gaining that knowledge at grade four and they're putting it into practice in the place. And then for grade five, we're asking them to put that practice into theory um, and use that terminology that they hopefully would have learned um, to describe why um, in that particular way. And then there's a few other um, slight rewordings of questions here for grade five as well. So um, the reasons for the physical characterization 
response to each text and each of the character situations, similar question to grade four. Um, and they'll also be asked the reasons for the choice of staging, like I said, using the words of the working stage areas. So hopefully that makes sense um, that we've swapped those over. So then we move on to um, level three, grade six. Um, we have changed uh, the, the, the periods um, for scene one and scene two. So now um, the final period is 1800 to 2000 rather than um, 1980s. A lot of for a lot of our learners, 1980 isn't a contemporary um, time. So hopefully we've brought it a little bit more um, into, you know, what is considered um, contemporary. So um, for scene one, they can present a scene um, from a play um, or, a, you know, a, a um, television or film screenplay that's written up until um, the year 2000. And then for scene two, it's post 2000. So um, a regulation that we have brought in for all um, level three exams, so grade six and seven, is that learners can no longer select scenes from television shows and serials. Um, we're finding, finding that this caused a lot of um, confusion um, with teachers, with examiners. Um, so we're, we're sort of just putting a stop to it to make it much easier to select, you know, scenes from play. There are plenty of plays out there. There are plenty of um, film screen plays out there which um, will allow the learner to choose, you know, appropriate pieces for them. Um, and this will, you know, sort of enable the learner to then answer the knowledge questions more effectively um, because they, you know, the character has a very clear start to their journey and end to their journey. So um, for grade six as well, we have added in an extra knowledge question, um, which is to give an explanation of the breathing technique is required to support the voice when performing. So, um, you know, they can use it in relation to their own scenes. What what breathing techniques did they use to allow them to be able to, you know, whisper but still be heard or be able to project their voice loudly? What did they do um, that would allow them to be able to do that effectively in their performance? Um, and it's, you know, if, if, if you're teaching verse and prose or, or speaking in public, those kinds of that kind of knowledge is sort of there. It's just slightly worded differently. Um, so that's that's a new requirement for grade six learners. So grade seven, um, again, you'll see that the um, the differences there in the periods. We've tried to define the periods as much as possible. Um, that was a question we quite often got asked by um, teachers. So. You know, for scene one, as long as the, the scene is written, it's been taken from a, a play that's written, you know, up, up to the year 1799, that's absolutely fine. Scene two, 1800 to 2000, and scene three, um, post 2000. So um, that's how we're, so, you know, like I say, bringing it a bit more um, into the, the modern day. So um, knowledge question clarification then. So the current question around um, assessment criteria 4.3 um, was one that we were finding a lot of teachers were confused about and rightly so I mean it's a very long question and um, so now we've hopefully simplified it so the learner um, will now be asked to give an explanation of the writing style and the period in which the chosen author was writing so they don't have to talk about how it's influenced their piece it's more of an understanding of what that author was writing about, what was happening at the time, a bit more context to perhaps why they were writing in the style they were, or you know why they were writing what they what they wrote. Um, and again, that regulation there uh, to not use pieces from television shows and serials. And grade eight, um, the the periods are exactly the same as grade seven. Um, we have expanded the practitioner list um, to kind of incorporate some practitioners that um, learners might be looking at on their um, A-level courses um, or might just have a genuine interest in. Um, we've just expanded it a little, a little bit more um, to encourage, you know, greater, greater understanding and um, learners can obviously um, investigate all those different people if they want to. But for this exam, it's just the one um, practitioner who, who they'll be asked about. Um, and again, that regulation there, learners can no longer select scenes from television shows and serials. And dual examinations have increased to 45 minutes. 
um, just to allow for the knowledge. It's, it's quite an in-depth um, knowledge section for grade eight. So it's to allow learners um, greater opportunity to each be able to answer those questions um, accurately. And, you know, the, the pressure of time isn't perhaps so much there any longer um, from August onwards. So that is the acting examinations. Um, like I say, not huge changes happening there. Um, tends to be more, you know, uh, knowledge requirements and that sort of thing. So moving on to devising then, um, we've got some changes at entry level to the assessment criteria. Mainly, again, it's separation of assessment criteria. Um, all of the stimuli have been updated and changed. Um, we've got some um, wording changes for the knowledge as well. So um, now the learners will be asked the reasons for their choice of theme, where the scene um, takes place and the story of the devised scene um, rather than the the current questions. Level level one, grade one, again, set stimuli have changed and been updated um, for scenes one and two. Separation of audibility, clarity of diction, and learners will now be asked the appearance of the characters rather than their reasons for the choice um, of, of theme or stimuli. Uh, similar to grade two, uh, that separation again of audibility, clarity of diction, and um, they'll be asked how the character is feeling in each device scene rather than the reasons for their choice of event. And grade three, um, again, very much the same. Um, how the character is feeling in each device scene will, um, will be asked rather than the reasons for the choice. Um, and we've got, um, that's 4.1 there, and then the separation of audibility and clarity of diction. So um, grade four then, um, as you'll see there, learners will no longer be required to, uh, learners will now, sorry, be required to demonstrate the four working stage areas. Um, so we've mapped it across the acting um, syllabus as well. So we've, we're bringing this now into um, grade four rather than grade five. Um, and the stimulus, uh, set stimuli have changed for, um, for device scene one and device scene two. Um, for device scene two, the learners will have uh, are asked to um, perform a, prepare, a prepared scene based on a visual stimulus, and they must bring that visual stimulus into the exam room with them and use it in the performance. So it could be um, it could be a painting, it could be a picture, a photograph, um, it could be you know a, a, a newspaper clipping of a picture or something something visual that they can then um, devise a scene from. I use in their um, in their scene itself. Grade five then um, we're looking at bringing in the four working stage areas into um, that uh, into grade four so we have to replace it with grade uh, with a new question for grade five so it's exactly the same as grade five acting so the re reasons for the choice of staging um, in each scene using knowledge of the working stage areas. So, you know, kind of using that understanding, as I said previously. Um, for grade five as well, one of the biggest changes is that the learners are no longer required to use sound or to, to base their scene um, around um, sound effect. So that means that um, a third person going into the room Room is no longer permitted. It's absolutely fine for learners to use sound effects in all of their devising exams. That's absolutely fine, but it means they will have to operate it themselves. Um, so it's not a requirement, and therefore it means that a third person can't go into the room. Um, looking at assessment criteria, then we've we've separated audibility and clarity of diction again here. Um, and learners will be asked the reasons for each character's movements rather than the reasons for the choice of staging. Um, so we've kind of combined the current, those two current knowledge questions, working stage areas and reasons for the choice of staging into one um, for grade five. And again, encouraging them to use that technical terminology. Grade six then, um, again, not much changing. Title and theme for devising two has been changed and updated. Separation of those assessment criteria, and the learners will be asked the challenges faced when devising each scene and how this was overcome, um, rather than the difference between improvisation and devising drama. Grade seven, the only thing that's changed really is the separation of assessment criteria, and titles and themes have been updated. 
Grade eight, um, the knowledge question will now be benefits of improvisation when devising drama. Um, so again, no longer will they be asked the difference between improvisation and devising drama. They'll be asked about the benefits of improvisation um, and all titles and themes have changed and been updated. So that is devising drama. Um, again, not huge things changing, but it's always worth noting and referring to the syllabus, um, especially the assessment criteria, because some things have been made clearer and some things have changed slightly as well. So moving on to miming, um, entry level to grade eight. So there is a new regulation. Learners are not permitted to mouth words in their mime or mime scene. They can obviously still have facial expression and be shocked, you know, and, and react that way. But the mouthing of words um, isn't permitted, as you can appreciate. It's a, a miming exam, so it's all more about physicality than the you know words that they're that they're speaking. Um, mime and mime scene titles have been updated where applicable. And there are no other changes to entry level, grade four, five, six, and eight. So what grades have we changed things in? So uh, level one, grades one and two. Um, learners will now be asked how each character is feeling in the mime and mime scene, rather than the choice, the reasons for the choice of title. Um, and that will sort of, um, it maps across what we've got at um, acting and devising as well. So we're sort of keeping those and sync. Grade three, um, again, how each character is feeling in the mime and mime scene rather than the reasons um, for their title choice. And grade seven, we have um, expanded the list of um, Commedia dell'arte characters and also given them um, their, their, their proper names, for want of a better word, um, but, you know, sort of, and we've obviously also put in brackets there, the three that have changed just just because there is some confusion over what the traditional name is to what um, sometimes these characters get called. And that's it for mining. Um, not much is changing there. Um, it is something we're hoping that teachers will be encouraged to take up a little bit more as it's such a great exam, um, especially for those learners who, who do get nervous speaking and um, who might not have the confidence to speak you know, loudly and clearly. It's, it's a really good exam. So moving quickly on to um, group examinations. I'm sorry about the technical difficulties. It's kind of delayed us a little bit, um, but I'll whiz through group and then I will pass you on to Marcy because she's got some really interesting and um, really important information to give you uh, regarding the new LER. Um, so group acting then, um, separation of assessment criteria, audibility, clarity of prediction, and we've added in use of pace, that's from entry grade to grade three. Um, group acting grade four, um, again, separation of assessment criteria there, and just some rewording um, of, of 3.1, communicate physicality um, has been brought in, and that same assessment criteria wording is is in the solo duo um, acting exams. Grade five, um, similar again, separation of assessment criteria and um, the wording of assessment criteria has been mapped a bit more against solo duo to kind of encourage, you know, and, and to show that reflection, the difficulty of a grade five group exam is the same as a solo duo group exam, for example. Um, grade six, learners will now perform two separate scenes. Um, so they're listed as scene one and scene two, each taken from a published play or screenplay or a published collection of scenes. Um, they can also be adapted from the dialogue of a, pub a published novel, which obviously isn't something you can do for solo duo acting exams, um, but it just, you know, there's a lot more scope and you can be a bit more creative with that then at group acting grade six. Um, and then the performance time for each scene has um, been amended. Grades seven and eight then, we've brought in the, um, the periods. Um, so again, sort of mapping that across solo duo acting at grades seven and eight, um, but only two scenes. So one pre-2000 and one post-2000. And again, we've got the separation there of audibility, clarity of diction. And then moving on to devising drama. 
Um, entry grade to grade three, the stimuli have been amended. Um, and again, you can you can find those in the actual syllabus itself. And then we've changed um, and separated those assessment criteria there. Grade four, um, again, separating audibility and clarity of diction, and we've added in use of modulation. Um, and the stimuli have changed, uh, stimulus, sorry, for grade four has changed. Grade five, um, again, similar to devising drama solo duo exams, it's no longer a requirement to use music or sound effects in their exam, which means that they're, they're not permitted to have a third person in there. Um, and again, like I said earlier, they can they can still have it. They can still use sound effects. They can still use music, but they have to provide that and operate it themselves. Um, and there's the separation again of the um, assessment criteria and addition of use of modulation by grade five. Then grades six, seven and eight, um, we have added in an improvisation element here. So much like we have at um, the, the solo duo grade six, seven and eight exams, um, the examiners will have um, a list of, of uh, stimuli to provide and that will be standardised. Um, it will be different for group than it is solo duo. Um, just because of the nature of the exam. Um, so let's have a look then at grade six, first of all. Um, the requirement there to include one of those following features at grade six is still the same for piece one, but for piece two, they'll have um, three minutes to create an improvised scene lasting between two and three minutes. Um, grade seven, for piece one, learners have to include two of those dramatic features. Um, and for the improvisation for piece two, the um, learners will have two minutes to create an improvised scene lasting between two and four minutes. Um, noting that, you know, it is between two and four. So if they present a scene that's two minutes um, and it meets the assessment criteria, that's absolutely fine. If they present something that's four minutes and it meets the assessment criteria, that's also absolutely fine. It's more about the, the quality of the work rather than the quantity. But that just, you know, that's not to say that a two minute piece is going to be better than a four minute piece. It just gives different groups work differently and it just gives that um, differentiation there. And then grade eight um, for piece one, the learners will be required to um, include three of the dramatic features listed there. And piece two, improvisation, um, learners will have one minute to create an improvised scene lasting between three and five minutes. So then moving on to group recital, um, just to note that these are available for learner group sizes <coughs> of learners from three um, and there is no maximum. Um, so these are really good exams if you want to work in a classroom environment um, and same with choral speaking exams as well. And these are from entry grade to grade three. So there's nothing beyond that. Um, as a general kind of change, we've got um, that recitals will be performed from memory, but introductions, links and conclusions may be read. Um, that's absolutely fine for learners to bring in note cards or to bring in a script to read. That's fine. Um, there are minimum requirements to as, as to how many pieces learners have to present, but there's no maximum. So if you can fit in more pieces within the time specifications, absolutely fine. No problem at all. Just gives teachers a bit more creativity. Um, and, you know, a bit more ownership of, of that particular recital. So entry grade then, it's one memorised verse selection and one memorised prose selection. Um, the theme is also of their own choice. So if there's something the learners are, you know, studying at school or have a particular interest in, absolutely fine, as long as one verse selection is presented and one uh, prose selection is presented. Grade one, again, a theme of their own choice, um, but this time it's two memorised verse selections and one memorised prose selection. Um, it does look as if a lot of assessment criteria has been brought in there, um, but it's again separation of assessment criteria and also um, use of facial expression has been brought in, uh, use of the performance space, you know, um, just to sort of encourage that creativity further. Then grade two, um, a similar sort of thing again, but the theme must be around uh, festivals, animals, school or food. Um, they must present one memorised verse selection and one memorised prose selection and also a scene taken from a play that links in with their theme. Grade three, um, 
the idea is that the learner will the learners will present a, a recital using published works or published adaptations um, of one of those um, authors listed there. So um, they have they have to include two memorised verse selections, one memorised prose selection, and a minimum of one scene from a published play or television film screenplay, or a devised scene based on another piece of work by the same author. So um, if there is you know. There are some um, authors there who haven't necessarily written plays or written film screenplays. So you, you could take another piece of their work and devise a scene around it. Um, again, just encouraging that creativity for the teacher and for the learner as well. So that's group recital. Um, choral speaking, entry grade to grade three. Um, the requirement change. So the grouping may be changed for each selection. Um, but it's up to you, it's up to the teacher if you if you want to, to move the learners around a bit for each presentation absolutely fine if you want to keep them as they are again absolutely fine that's not a problem at all and um, we just kind of want to again empower teachers and empower the learners to kind of take that ownership um, off their own work um, assessment criteria is listed there again we've just separated um, a few out and reworded slightly and then grade one to grade three um, that requirement is still you know still the same grouping can be however the teacher and the learners want it to be um, use of facial expression has been brought in use of gesture and movement um, has, has been you know uh, that's been carried over as well um, and then a few more sort of separations there at the top um, so that that is what has changed essentially. What I would say is I know I have breezed through these and I'm sure you have lots of questions, um, but I'm conscious that we've got some really important information to give you about the new learner examination report. So um, if you do have any questions specific to, you know, to anything, please email in. Um, the best email address is exams at lambda.ac.uk. Um, or give us a call and ask for a member of the syllabus team um, and you'll be put through to one of us and we can um, have a chat with you about it. So let me hand you over to Marcia then. OK. <clears throat> well, I'm to fill while the PowerPoint comes up. Uh, one of the projects that I was tasked with um, in this last year has been looking at how examiners report on learners uh, attainment against the assessment criteria. So basically the report form. Um, just to give you a little bit of background while we wait for the presentation. Um, I went back in our history at Lambda, I'm sure lots of you who've taken exams, along with myself and Linda, remember the old star report forms on white cards, we remember the trifold report cards uh, and as examiners ourselves we remember the difference in, in the style of how um, we assess learners and we put that, that back to them. And so um, we've gone back, not only in our own history of how we've done that and, and reported, but we've looked at other boards and the way in which they are reporting back to learners as well. Uh, and as such, uh, last um, June, 2018, we, um, we did a survey. Um, we asked um, teachers, centre coordinators, anyone that, that, that had access to that survey, which was everyone on the database, their thoughts about um, the way in which we assess. As I said, this was um, carried out in June. Uh, 2018. So I'm going to offer you, uh, taking you through the PowerPoint, um, some of the reasons that have led to the way in which we will be reporting from August 1st. Um, so, as I said, in June 2018, we uh, did a survey. Um, it was sent out and the survey requested feedback. Um, on implementing a new way in which Lambda could provide accurate, because that's, that's the point of our examination, to provide accurate, valid and reliable marks and feedback, whilst remaining standardised across the panel of examiners. Questions that were in the survey focused on the current method that we use and what we could change. Uh, I'm sure you'll all agree, everyone's very vocal <laughs> about what we could change on our learn reports. And it's important to capture that. 
uh, and and this survey most most definitely did and and us search gave us ways and means to move forward um, just to give you a quick summary of, of our findings, many customers commented that the feedback from other awarding bodies was either similar to or better than Lambda. Many commented that other awarding bodies' feedback was more personalised than Lambda. Uh, feedback was quicker. Some felt that six weeks was far too long. Many suggested that teachers, parents and learners would prefer much more personalised feedback rather than a fairly neutral reworking of the criteria. Um, but then again, many customers felt that Lambda reports were very clear and specific. So as you can see, we've got 50% uh, of our customers that think that uh, they want a more personalised report. And yet we've got 50% of customers that are suggesting that the way in which we feedback is very clear and it's accurate. So how do we um, how do we satisfy it all? Well, with the summation of the results, as I said, it was clear uh, that customers believe that the value of our LER and learner examination reports was to encourage and motivate learners to improve and improve your confidence, but also to provide an accurate record of attainment as to how learners perform under the pressure of examination conditions. But it was also, as I said, clear that customers didn't like the generic and repetitive commenting that examiners were, were making. It was seen as being impersonal. And sometimes, on because there's so many comments against the criteria, sometimes uh, they uh, commented that they couldn't always read everything with clarity that was on, on the report. And surely the conclusion of this for us was that it was clear that customers wanted a clear way of understanding learners' achievements. They didn't want to have to try and pick out what the examiner had said against the, the assessment criteria. But the customers also wanted a personalised comment for a, for a learner. And as such, when we started the design or reworking of the learning report forms, there were two factors that we realised that we needed to consider. Retaining the beneficial nature of rewarding against a scale of attainment but also to have a freedom for an examiner's comment using their expertise to engage the learner. Um, but there are possible issues with this. I'm sure you can imagine some of them, but really the main issues with leaving personalised commenting with regard to an examination is the questioning of the subjective nature of an examiner's comment, but also how an examiner's comment has impacted upon the learner's final result. As such, uh, I'll give you a after having done that, we ha have moved towards a, a timeline uh, towards August the 1st. As I said, in, in 2018, in June, we had the, the customer survey was completed and feedback was taken on board. As I said, we also looked back into the history of our own reporting and that of other boards. And that led July to September to designing um, lots of different um, formats to trial. Examiners did that for us at many standardisation events. October to December, we then um, got all of our team leaders to trial and feedback um, on all of the designs created because we need something that is fit for purpose. 2019 in February, we got ourselves to a place where we could invite a focus group in. There were centre coordinators there, there were customers who commented and, and got to feedback on, on the design that, was, that we thought was the, the, the best one moving forward and that gave clarity against the new syllabi. We know in May, uh, the start of examiner training, teachers workshops, Q&A sessions with customers and obviously August will be the implementation of a new uh, LER. Um, the design features of the new learning reports. They're basically of these two sections. One, as we said, 50% of the current um, survey suggests that customers like the clarity with which they can see how their learner has achieved against the assessment criteria. 50% of customers on that survey said they want the examiner to be able to have freedom to comment personally for the learner. So the new LER has these two features. The first is the learner's achievement against the assessment criteria. And the second is the comment from the examiner for the learner. So let's look at both of those sections. OK, the assessment of the learner against the assessment criteria. You'll see an example of the form in a few moments, but if I, if I take you generally through. 
The assessment criterion moving forward is now generated. It will no longer be written by the examiner. So it will appear already on the learner examination report form. The report form has a much clearer understanding of whether a learner has achieved distinction, merit, pass or fail for each assessment criteria. The listing of learning outcomes matches the new syllabi. So the one thing that you will see if you look at the um, the LER we're currently using now and the new one is that the word interpretation and technique is taken off the learner report. Now they have to achieve a number of assessment criteria that allows them to pass the learning outcome. But don't worry, interpretation and technique is listed in the syllabi. So you can still see which learning outcomes relate to technique and the way in which a learner puts that technique into practice to achieve an interpretation. Marks for distinction, merit, pass and fail are clearly signposted on the LER for everyone to understand the mark awarded. So what you will find is the range of marks that a learner can achieve to meet each of those bands. It's on the report form. So when you're reading it, you can look down and it's transparent as to what a learner has been awarded. Uh, rationale for commenting. OK, the comment is the most problematic part. Uh, as we said, it's, it's, it's subjective, but we need the assessment to be objective. This is why these are, are two. The way in which we're going to comment is very separate and, and quite new for us. So the rationale for commenting. I believe, I think everyone does, that learning is an active process and requires feedback in order for the learner to achieve their potential moving forwards. And we know for those um, teachers that remember the older style report forms, they know that learners will analyse, debate, argue with and quite possibly treasure feedback if it's useful. I know when we speak to customers, they always tell us about certain examiners who commented on their work in the past. So how do we capture that for learners moving forward in, in the future? So the examiner comment. The primary concern for the examiner is leaving a learner a comment that will help them to understand how to improve moving forward. That's what's important. We can comment upon the pieces that we've seen, but what will a learner actually do with that? They'll then have to dissect what we've said to work out how they can use what we've said to influence them in the next goal that they wish to achieve. So why don't we instead look at what a learner has done in the space and then help them move forward from that space into the next grade exam they're taking or the next life challenge that they may be embarking upon. Commenting will be constructive, it will reflect learner strengths along with leaving, as I said, helpful advice to empower a learner moving towards the next goal. The performance of the examination itself will generate the examiner's thoughts, which will comment on the skills of the performer and not the individual pieces. Here's an example. <laughs> I know this is the desperate thing. But isn't there an example of what we might get? This is this reflects something that from August the first you will begin to see for your learners. You'll notice now uh, for all grades we've put things such as poem title. You'll, you'll see that on the top of the report. Uh, we've put song title, scene title, and hopefully that will encourage um, teachers to look at those forms and maybe uh, see before the day of the event of a session whether or not an exam needs to be changed. So we're encouraging by signposting what is required, uh, as I said, matching literally subject for subject, grade for grade from the syllabi. You will see that there is D, M, P and F at the top of four boxes. That will be the indicator as to how the learner has achieved. And as I said, uh, if you want to know what a D means, the banding descriptors are in the syllabi for every subject. So you will be able to read what a distinction learner needs to have done to have achieved a mark uh, within that banding area. As I said, there are the learning outcomes and next to the learning outcomes are all of the assessment criteria that make up that learning outcome. And hopefully this will serve to clarify when a learner has failed. Um, because to pass a learning outcome, you have to pass each of the assessment criteria. So those three assessment criteria for L01 on this one, for instance, will enable a learner to pass L01. Uh, 
Um, so that's an example of an introductory stage three. As you can see, um, the assessment is pretty clear. There's the ranges at the bottom. So you'll know what each of those um, banding marks should you know, be. Most importantly, you'll see the box below, a comment from your examiner. Um, so not a comment on your assessment, but a comment from your examiner. Now, the comment, as I said, will find a strength in the learner's performance and then find something that we believe will help them to move forward from that exam and be even more successful in the next examination they take or in the goal that they're moving on to achieve. I'll give you another example. There's an act in grade five. Um, as you can see, the, the scene titles are, are there. The banding area so you can now see that for instance for grade five um, a pass a learner will receive between 10 and 12 from merit between 13 and 15 and for distinction between 16 and 20 um, and again the comment from from the examiner um, so just to recap uh, on the early arts. What we needed was clarity in assessing a learner's skills against the assessment criteria. I believe the uh, clarity that you can see with the, the top of the learner report will, will bring us that. That's, that's the most important bit. But also that box below allows an examiner to leave a personalised feed forward comment to hopefully encourage learners to come back and think about what they could do so that they can achieve with even greater ability the next time. Um, and as I said, the new learning examination report will be used for all examinations from August the 1st onwards. So hopefully, as you can see, we've captured the two things that people wanted. Clarity of how uh, a learner achieves under the pressure of examinations against the assessment criteria, but also response to all of those customers and to examiners who really want to leave their expertise for that learner on that page to help them on their journey. You never know, you might encourage them to visit more subject areas, especially if they're finding that they're, they're not achieving in one area. Um, because each subject area has a specific skill uh, that can be addressed. Um, so yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I'm terribly sorry. It, we, we, we have to wind this up now. Unfortunately, we've gone a little over time. I hope what we've been able to share with you today is going to give you great inspiration for the 1st of August. We're all very excited. We feel that the syllabus review has been very successful and we're very confident that the work that's gone into the due diligence that's gone into looking at the way we're reporting and the way we're assessing has been absolutely spot on and all learners and teachers will enjoy the new syllabus and the new reporting method.